interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Good morning, everybody. It Good is morning. that time again. It's Q&A time. Oh, so hot. We have quite a few questions this time. And uh, we've decided, okay, so off, after a little bit of feedback that we received, um, that I was rushing and stressing uh, people out, <laughs> um, then I thought maybe we should just do away with our timer. Um, and we'll see how we go with that. Yeah, um, well, we'll just get through it when we get through it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So I think maybe that will relieve the stress from everyone. And, uh, and we can start at a nice leisurely pace, Even in my we? head now, I'm like, come on, let's get on with it. Let's go. <laughs> like, it's a tough, tough habit to break. Okay. <laughs> right, so question one, Gary Wyatt. Uh, and someone else has also asked this as well. Um, MJH has asked, um, what weather station uh, usually sits behind me? Uh, where do we purchase it? How reliable has it been for our needs? Because uh, I've been looking for one and haven't been overly impressed with what they've seen. So this is, um, it's a lacrosse technology weather station. So that's probably not going to be readable. We bought it at uh, Island Waterworld here in Grenada. Yeah, when you spend ago. so much money, yeah. you get some freebie points with them. And so we were like, uh, what do we need? Our barometer's wrecked. Let's get this purely for the barometer. Yeah, so it's... It's pretty good. I haven't had any issue with it whatsoever. It's mm. um, it's got a uh, this the inside station and then a tiny like dongle that goes outside um, for the outdoor temperature and humidity. Um, I really like it. And the major thing I like about it is obviously indoor outdoor conditions, so you know whether you're better off outside or inside, and you can sort of know whether you're you know the inside of the boat is three degrees hotter. You need to open some hatches, yeah. etc. But the real value for me is the um, the pressure history, like the rolling barometer that you get. So you get a 24 hour um, history of the pressure um, in three hour increments. And so as many of you know, that's kind of the precursor to bad weather or a squall. Um, and so you want to know if it's going to spike or if it's dropping really rapidly. So I find that to be awesome because I, anytime I come downstairs on passage, I always find myself just glancing at the pressure and glancing at the trend. It has helped us before. I, re I remember one one night on our first ever multi-day passage from oh, yeah? Baham, uh, like fruits from Marathon to Turks and Caicos. I specifically remember saying to you back when the analog barometer worked, yeah, that it was always like, oh, the barometer, ah. we were at like 990 or something. I was like, yeah. oh, that's low. We're going to get a, a blow. Ah, like we're going to cool. get a squall. And mm. I was, this was on my way off shift. And you were on Guess shift, and, and it did. Like I remember, like waking up, being yeah. Kiara was like, "You were right." It bucketed down, yeah. rain and a big front. And he came slept kit. through the whole thing. And I slept like a baby through the whole thing. So um, it's good. Yeah, it's sense. actually not too bad. Um, and it's got little like so it gives you the moon cycles as well, and it gives you a little happy and a sad face of whether it's too humid and too hot, of which case. It is always sad because it is always too humid and always too hot in temperature. It's, yeah, he's never happy. He's, he's, he's never ever been happy. I think I've seen him one morning that he was happy. Not here, is in Bermuda. He's a temperate latitude guy. He's not a he's tropical a, he's guy. He's a bit. Is that all? I think there's that's... no timer attached. I know. So... I'm like, did we summarize well? Did we get it all? all right, let's <laughs> okay. Next, next question. question. Um, this is from Stained Glass Arch, um, and he goes in by saying that uh, he's just finished up catching up on all the videos during lockdown in Queensland. Um, your journey has been very educational, but I was wondering, and this is going to sound weird, what's the deal with toilets on yachts? Is waste stored or jettisoned overboard? Very nice mm -hmm. nautical terms there. <laughs> How many systems are there? You've taught me many things about cruising, but this has never come up and rarely does on any sailing video I've seen. Danny talk! You can feel that one. You reckon? Yeah, you're the plumber on board. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, delegated as plumber. Um, so we have a Raritan toilet, um, and I'm not going to recommend it's called Raritan. A head here. Oh, sorry. So the head. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a Raritan head, and the other option that we um, that other people get is a Jab Jabsco. 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 
We other. just need to redo it, like rebuild the things every six months. It's just yeah. Anyway, they are a bit. Um, relating to your first question, uh, what does it do with toilets and yacht? Is waste stored or jettisoned overboard? So on boats, you have two options. Um, one of them is a holding tank, and the other one is um, just going straight overboard. And you usually have a Y valve in between the two, and you can um, change depending on what situation you're in. So um, I know that US was incredibly strict with um, having it in a holding tank and getting everything pumped out either 12 miles offshore, 12? 12 miles offshore yeah. or um, at a marina where they have a pump out. Being in the Caribbean, it's a little less, um, that's, it's not as strict. Well, it's just not a thing down here. Like they don't, it doesn't seem to the be waste management is, you know, some, some of the islands don't have waste management facilities so their sewage just goes straight out in the ocean anyway like yeah depending on what anchorage you're in you might be anchored next to a, a sewage drain like that's very it, true it happens yes. um then you've got like it's not just or predominantly boats that are top tier you've got like little you know little islander boats you've got fishing boats you've got boats from all over the world are they all using holding tanks god no Absolutely not. Are they made to specifications that they need holding tanks? No. A lot of boats don't even have a holding yep. tank. Yep. It just goes straight overboard. The done thing, or the the assumed done thing down here while you're moving through the islands as a cruiser, is that you will use your holding tank till it's full, and then on your next available opportunity when you're out, sailing out. between islands, you know, 12 miles offshore, uh, or as far as practical, um, you jettison your waste. And yep. that's and you come back and you've got an empty holding tank again. Yes. Um, that doesn't happen very often. I don't think it happens very often. I like plumbing. To answer your question, full circle, plumbing for us is uh, two heads, both run back with saltwater flush, both run back to a holding tank, and we have a uh, the, our manual bilge pump also has a valve that can switch over to pump out holding tank. And one day when we get around to it, we have a macerator pump which has like a shredder in it if you will it's designed to handle heavy Too heavy uh, fluids um, we will replace the the Y valve in the manual pump to just have a macerator pump that can jettison the waste overboard when we're underway so yes. if we're underway and we want to empty the tank you just come down and push the button and uh, the waste goes flying um, don't go swimming before <laughs> nine o'clock in any anchorage <laughs> do you remember that time when you thought like, that you saw something floating and you were like it has happened before he was filming yeah, himself in the water and, he, and, and he changed his face was like is that a turd <laughs> <laughs> his face like visibly it's changed definitely happened before I don't want to know. <laughs> what is it, Ads? I just jumped in and I like swam around, came up, and I was like, what's that floating in the water? <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong, but <laughs> it could be a dirty great turd. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it, just because it, it it should be done doesn't mean it is done. Yeah. It doesn't mean that everyone has the facilities that we all do. Exactly. Um, but yeah, don't be upset about not knowing about the toilets either, because just for a sad, funny story, my brother-in-law and my sister uh, we're down here recently, as many of you probably seen, and they and we couldn't figure out why. Like, they were being a bit weird about using the toilet at first, and they were very like, kind of stressed about it because earlier we made the point that uh, you, you can't waste water. Yeah, you can we drink really, and survive from it, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, we were hammering that point home because it's sort of it's a, it can be a hard adjustment. Anyway, they didn't know that the toilet flushed with salt water, and so they were like half like just like, afraid one, two. afraid <laughs> to flush the toilet and like you know you go and do your number twos or whatever it takes a bit of water to get get rid of it sometimes and they were very anyway one day claire very sheepishly asked me like um what if i can't get it all out like, and I was yeah. like what do you mean just keep flushing she's like but i want to save the water and like, then the penny no, dropped no, just no, like no. oh no all this time you've been thinking that explains the smell Anyway, oh. so don't be embarrassed that you don't understand the yep. toilet plumbing because they're all different. Next question? Yep, let's do it. 
Um, so Kiara's between between takes. Kiara's or well, not takes, but she said, "Hello, we'll just stop for a second there. Do you want a towel to wipe your face <laughs> off? You're sweating. I can't see if it's on camera, but like I turned around to you and said, you 'You're sweating too. It's 30, 30, 30, it. 35 degrees in here.'" So see an indication <laughs> that we should be outside we should because be doing it's thirty five degrees in here and thirty three outside. So Ooh. we're both sweating, my love. <laughs> we're just gonna have to deal. Next question. Just need some air conditioning. Uh, Paris Bosmer Boss Bosman. Um, and now I did answer this in uh, in Instagram via text, but I thought we could talk it out uh, in a Q and A because I reckon. It's a subject of uh, much debate, mm. and I think you might be able to take some value from some of the comments that might follow the answer to this question. Um, I won't read the whole thing, but in essence, uh, basically the, the question was, should I buy the new £45 Mantis or stick with my £35 Delta? Anchoring is one of those subjects, and I think I said this in my response, anchoring is like second to religion oh, and yeah. politics when it comes to sailing. So I don't want to preach like I have had either of those anchors i've not had a delta and i've not had a mantis so i can only speak to what i've had but i have been in your shoes wondering if my anchors so full, full context we started out we bought the boat it had a danforth a bruce and a cqr yeah the cqr was the primary anchor for the previous owners and the bruce was on the bow roller as well as a backup um the dan danforth never saw the light of day and we've since turfed it um I think they used it as a kedge or something like that. Anyway, yeah. we got along just fine with those anchors, as did the previous owners, for like 14 years. And we never... Like, if you dive your anchor and you set it and revert back up on it and you do the right thing, an anchor is an anchor. In a, and if they're set, they're set um, within certain bounds. Uh, however, I had people crying, screaming bloody murder that I needed to get a Rockna or a Mantis. And, you know, over time when we sort of felt like it was an appropriate time to do it, we did. We bought a Rockna and mostly because we got, a, got it for a song uh, in St. Martin. It was yeah, on like sale, like crazily good price. So we're like, well, we can't walk past that. Um, and we picked it up. Would I recommend you racing out and buying a 45 pound Mantis in lieu of a Delta? No, not if money's tight, because you have an anchor. Learn to use the anchor you have, anchor in sensible places. Um, always dive on the anchor. Always when dive we had on it, those back two. up on it. Yeah, when we had those two, we always dove in our anchors. Yeah, um, so that's probably my answer, would be get one when it when you can. Like, you can never have too big of an anchor and, and too high a quality of an anchor. So it's always worth the investment. There's no money wasted on a better better ground tackle. Should that be a priority? Probably not. Um, if your anchor works and it's appropriately sized for the boat, which it sounds like it is, uh, and it's worked for the previous owner, then it'll work for you if you do it right. Um, so yeah, keep your thumb on the pulse, keep your ear, ear to the ground for a new anchor, but don't go racing out just because everyone says you have to have this, you have to have that, because they're, you know, they have one and they've spent all the money. Like, yeah. That's my advice. Um, Smart advice. I concur. You concur? I do indeed. I, ho I hope I just, because this was a, a little while ago, I hope that's what I said in my text message to you. Maybe I've just completely contradicted <laughs> probably, myself. Yeah, he probably just said like, nah, nah, man, you've got to get that mantis. Just do it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, next question. Oh, this is a good one. All right. Uh, okay, two questions about this. Uh, all right, so Manny Leon says, when are you guys sailing to the Pacific? And on a similar thread... David Ma uh, Maslin says, are you still planning on sailing back to Australia? Which is in the Pacific. So you seem pretty happy where you are. You can feel that one, my love. You're, Do the, you reckon? you're the admiral. Okay. Well, I. this is a whole larger thing, but Kiara and I often flip-flop, well, everyone flip-flops on their plans out here because things change so rapidly. Yeah. You're one failure away from another... 12 months of maintenance and repairs and, exactly. and a shock to the conference. You know, one day you're like, we're ready. And then something will break that you didn't see coming. Yeah. You're like, we're not ready. Yeah. Um, and Kiara and I flip flop on the plan all the time. We discuss it every morning, probably. Uh, and Kiara's very much impatient. Yes. Uh, to put it gently. I'm impatient. And I'm more of a, <sighs> I don't know, the weight. Yeah. Prepare. Res I responsible is too strong of a word. Um, but I feel the weight of responsibility. And so I, when I make a, like I don't want to commit to anything that we're not ready for and make any empty promises so I like to keep it all very 
tentative, whereas Kiara wants is like, let's go. When are we going? We're going to set a date and we're going to do that. That's what we're doing. And I'm like, you can't get better yeah, unless you challenge but yourself. If something changes, then you're going to be gutted. So let's just like let's keep raising the bar. Let's let's make the goal to be better every month until we just so not so good that we can't stop. But until you're oh, really ready for that. anything, basically. <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyway, we go back and forth. But to answer the question about the Pacific... Oh, um, you are talking so much. Continue. You, no, you got, you got this. You got this. <laughs> um, okay, yes, of course, we are definitely going back to Australia at some stage. Um, however, it does involve, like, going through the Panama Canal, and that is about $3,000, I think, maybe, nowadays. Um, it just changed in January 2020. Mixed reviews on how much, but... Yeah, mixed reviews on how much, but I think... Um, it's I've not heard... something you want to do often. Yeah, exactly. So, if we go there, it is a kind of... Like, it's not as if we're there forever, absolutely not. Um, but while we're in this part of the world, it would be... It would be silly to not attempt to go further afield, i.e. up north or the West Caribbean and various other parts. Um, so we're not against going to the Pacific. It's just that we want to really, really try and see this side of the world first. Um, yeah. Had COVID not have happened, we would have tried to... Um, hold on, hold on. Next question. Joe Marga says, "I thought you guys were heading oh, to England. Although to be, can be, yeah. Good. Although to be fair, I can see why you would stay put. It's beautiful where you are." Wait, so can is. I just temper what you said first with some other reasons? Okay. So, as Kiara said, this is we we sort of don't want it. Yeah, you, know, you go through the canal and it's it's very final. It's not something you want to do. Multi-directional, especially like bashing to windwards across the Pacific to then cross, like going downwind on the milk run mm. to Australia, only to then turn around and smash back to windward. It's kind of, you want to do things in cycles and have the wind with you and play your hand yeah. as smart, as as intelligently rather, as you can. Um, and so from the Caribbean, you've got the trades obviously taking you west. So going west, you're with the trades as, for most latitudes of the Pacific. To have the wind taking you east, the westerly breezes, you have to go down south into the 40s and kind of go like Magellan Straightway to go back across the Pacific to windward. Or Cape, Cape Horn. Horn. Um, so, and that's some serious, serious sailing, obviously. Or you cross the Pacific, you go to Australia and Asia, and then you go the Indian Ocean Way and down... Uh, Madagascar, Cape of Good Hope, or South Africa, Canal. or the Suez Canal. Also very serious sailing. So while we're sort of developing ourselves and the boat and uh, figuring out where this is all going to go with us, it'd be sensible to stay with the wind. And from here, it's the perfect launching point. You've got the Gulf Stream, you've got the northern westerlies uh, taking you across and then it's all downhill from there to come back and do it. So this is the perfect launching pad for a west, uh, sorry, for an eastern journey. It's possibly the best stepping off point we're going to have anywhere, really. Yeah. So it's hard for us to sail away from that um, without a very, very good reason, which is why we want to go uh, east first. Um, In saying that... We are Which not. Brings us to the next part of the question. Yeah, exactly. Um, in saying that, we know that. So this year, we probably would have tried to do something a little more adventurous, whatever ocean that might have been. You know, we're not sure. Obviously, that's in the past now. We can't travel to Europe right now during hurricane season. It's just dumb. You just don't do it. So um, <laughs> that means that we kind of need to wait until next year to see what plans are. Um, in dis in uh, we've made the decision of like in uh, January to see what's opening up um, and at that stage we'll need to make the decision of whether to attempt to stay in Europe, uh, sorry, stay with our plans for crossing to Europe or to just bite the bullet and go to the Pacific. Plan exactly. A is go east to cross the Atlantic. Plan B, if it's all taking too long and we're really really treading water and there's just nowhere else in the world that we can go, we'll probably just head Head, uh, head home, not to give up, but because the Pacific is open and we can head that way. Uh, for now, that might change as well. All it takes is like one break, one outbreak somewhere, and everyone to clamp, so clamp true. down, yeah. and we're back to square one. So. Okay, I feel like we've we've covered this question. Yeah. Um, who knows? Is basically the answer at this point. <laughs> okay, number six. Thank you for the question, all who yes. asked that question. Tvonsvek. 
it says. Good. Oh, oh, okay. Really, um, on on in line with what we were just discussing, um, he was saying, "What's the situation with U.S. citizens getting right. into the Caribbean from your perspective? Should I head for Fiji instead? Both are big boy sales for a guy with only a ha- one thousand five hundred miles of SoCal. Um, what do you what are your thoughts? Should he go to the Caribbean or should he go to Fiji?" All right. Well, we were mentioning red countries yeah. and green countries, and that there are some people are accepting uh, the red countries, so countries that are on a red list, um, but with with um, you know two weeks of quarantine instead of countries that are on a green list, which just need to do a little PCR test. I say a little PCR test. I heard it's really not not ideal. Well, now it's green and green. Like just this morning, I found out that we. Allegedly, this is second-hand information. Can go between here and St. Vincent Grenadines, which is a neighbouring nation, uh, with nothing but a temperature yeah. uh, test. I would they say take you've got COVID. Had I've been know, looking I at you right now. <laughs> I wouldn't want to show up on a day <laughs> like today. Bit, um, they'll quarantine me for sure. <laughs> uh, so that's a sign of things to come. Yes, um, exactly. But what I suspect you were about to say was uh, presently the US. Like if you came from USVIs you would be able to come here, but you'd have to do two weeks of quarantine and a PCR test. Yeah. Excuse me. So I don't think, so in terms of uh, having this as a kind of like, but that's not your baby grounds to, to get yourself yeah. um, a little more yeah. confident with sailing. I would say it's a really great grounds for doing this. Well, no? What are the, op- yeah, but look, look at the alternative. Should Fiji. I head for Fiji? Oh, that's true. I mean, I, I know that the parts of the Pacific are open, Mm. But I don't know what their conditions are and what the national, like what the red and green list situation is for the Pacific. Uh, so, <clears throat> so yes, I can't, I don't want to lead you astray and give you and say, do this, don't do that, because I can't speak to the Pacific. I do have, we have some friends that are getting through there and just by keeping abreast of their progress, we know that they're making progress. Yep. They're an Australian flag vessel, they're Australian. So... I can't comment on what that might be like mm. for a US flag vessel and a US citizen. But I can comment on what that might be like for a person, uh, an Caribbean. American flag vessel and an American in the Caribbean. Um, you've got it Puerto Rico, depends. USVIs, you've got Antigua, you've got SVGs and you've got Grenada. All of those places will take you. You may or may not have to quarantine at some of them, but that's a fair yeah. bit of territory to cover. Not the best time of year to come down there, and to do that run, but if you wait another couple of months, then I'd say you, you, if you, and get down here and get into those green zones and do your quarantine. For example, if you hoofed it straight to, from USVIs to Grenada, you do two weeks here, then you can go to SVGs with no quarantine. Yep. If SVGs is on the same list as Antigua, you might be able to go straight to Antigua and work your way south again. So in summary, it all depends on the country where you have previously been, not where your vessel is really flagged. Um, it's not fair yeah. that that American vessels out here um, have been, or UK no, vessels right. out here or something, or whatever vessels out here, have been in the Caribbean for three years, but they're getting penalised for the flag that they fly. That's not the case. No, um, it's, the, it's the country that you've previously just been in. Yeah. All right. Flying, however, might not be. Actually, no, flight is the same. Sorry, no, forget what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter where you're He's from. About it's all right. about where you've come from, where you've been, and where you're registered. Is that rain? Whoops. Yeah, it's last question. Go, go, go. Okay, last question before the rain hits. All right. Um, this is in um, response to what makes a great blue water sailboat with John Kretschmer. And I remember that John said... Um, so if, many lovely comments If there that. was a billboard... So uh, Adam asked, if there was a billboard in um, Annapolis Boat Show, what would it say? Oh. And John, thinking that he was God, was like, <laughs> I have a cure for seasickness. <laughs> and I was like, no. I, I think you misappropriated this question. You misunderstood but, my question. Yeah, so he's, misunderstood. I've said if you, if you could put anything on a billboard above... Uh, the Miami Boat Show or any boat show for that matter to advise cruisers what would it be thinking he's going to say like go sooner or do it cheap yeah. or you know <laughs> go f- whatever whatever the advice might be and he said um, he must have thought if if I if he could do anything yeah 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 and he just said the cure for seasickness <laughs> <laughs> straight away but like I'd cure seasickness anyway so um, so this guy just uh, was was commenting on that oh, this is Paul Skinner he was commenting on that and I just thought that I'd comment uh, he, he said something about um all his life, the one thing that holds him back from doing long trips is seasickness. And so it's not necessarily a question, but I did think that I would um, say my comments on seasickness. You empathise with him. Uh, exactly. I 100% empathise with 
empathize um, because it's not ideal um, I've only really been hit badly with seasickness after um, we left Bermuda and were planning to cross the Atlantic um, that was when it truly floored me to the stage where I couldn't get up and I couldn't hold down another seasick uh, like a seasickness tablet to make me feel better so I take a, um, a 24 hour I think it's a 12, 24 hour tablet um, that's Meg Megslick I'm going to need to put the, ne the name in Meglazine? underneath. I'm, I'm tempted to say that. Megalodon. I don't know. No, it's, it has a Z in it. Um, anyway, I take that one, um, which sorts me out for a day. And then as soon as I'm feeling the effects wearing off, I'll take another one. Mm. Um, and from there, three, two to three days in, I'll find that I'm, I don't feel the effects of your tablet wearing they do off. They wipe you out. And I and I start to just feel normal at sea. So honestly, it takes me about two to three days to get my sea legs. As Adam said, it does knock me out as in like I'm tired and just flopping around most of the time anyway. Um, and I've tried taking herbal versions and ginger tablets and, and yeah, yeah, um, electric pulse things that are on your, um, your pressure points here. I've also tried taking the actual pressure point things. Um, my goodness. And, and like obviously nothing Gin as well. Ginger biscuits. Yep, done the ginger ginger tablets ginger biscuits ginger sweets so how do you set yourself up for the best all right possible so, chance though okay so to set yourself so up like if I'd you say, could get as close to a cure as possible okay do these things all right I would recipe. oh goodness okay well well if you tell them what you do they might somebody might have a better idea yeah that's so true you, we could yeah, improve that's your rate of success yeah. if it were really important that i'd be that I'd be okay on the sea, i.e. when we were starting to cross the Atlantic, I would just take a seasickness tablet um, and take it to every 24 hours um, until I found that I got my sea legs. Um, and that's what I would take, the, the version that I just said before. If I knew that it was just going to be a day hop, and I, I'm not really a fan of taking too much medicine if I don't have to, then I would... Eat healthily in the morning, as in not have too much greasy food, definitely not have too much coffee. Coffee makes me feel gross. I wouldn't take any tablets, <laughs> but I would, um, I felt that standing up and steering and looking out the horizon as to where you're going, yeah. that helps. Um, and then if you do feel iffy, there's, just, I'm sorry, just fetal position, just curling up into fetal position and shutting your eyes. And that always makes me feel better. 99% of the time the wind helps a little bit but like just just curl up and just you'll feel better after that I definitely think there's something to the keeping busy yes thing. and um, yeah keeping busy doubt. with steering or so and just getting a wind on your face that helps all right so, so I think um yeah. thank you all for listening and yeah, thank you, uh, thank so you for much. your time if you have any more questions please fire away absolutely it's uh it's really nice it's nice to just sit down with coffee and chat yeah everyone, so. maybe we need to take it outside next time so we can cool down We'll mess with it. We'll we'll yeah. set it up and see how it goes. It's just the noise, the ambient yeah. noise and the, the, wind the, noise the background noise, helpful. and if it rains or it's distracting. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us, and um, we hope that you enjoyed that. And if you did, put a thumbs up and subscribe and and all of that malarkey. And uh, we will see you next time. We'll see you Monday for a new episode, yes. and hopefully the Thursday after for a new Q and A. Yes. Have a good week, everyone.